How's it going everybody? I'm Nightline84 and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be talking about the Michael Jackson and Prince album that never happened. Now it's no secret that both Michael Jackson and Prince had talks and working together. In fact, it's no secret that they were supposed to work on the song We Are The World. They were also supposed to work on the song Bad. And um, they were supposed to work on a song for the History album. But none of those ever happened. Now, the story goes that in 1988, Prince was working on an album called Raven to the Joy Fantastic, which would have been released in 89. But obviously that had to be cut short since uh, Warner Brothers talked to Prince about working on a album for the Batman movie. Now this whole thing was just extremely perfect because first of all, Prince was a big Batman fan. In fact, one of the first things Prince ever learned um, was the theme song for Batman. So when Prince heard the opportunity, he obviously took it and worked on that instead. Now I know for some of you Michael fans, you guys are wondering, well, why did they choose Prince instead of Michael in working on the album? Well, first of all, Prince was under the Warner Brothers label at the time, which was the same label that was funding um, the Batman movie. Plus, the director Tim Burton and the actor Jack Nicholson, who actually portrayed uh, the Joker in the movie, um, were big Prince fans. In fact, Tim Burton used uh, some of Prince's songs on the temp tracks for the Batman movie, which if you don't know uh, what a temp track is, basically it's a soundtrack um, filled with uh, songs that were already made, um, but basically they were to represent the movie, if that makes sense. Now I know some of you Michael fans are wondering um, when I'm gonna bring up Michael, and um, this is the part where Michael comes in, because first of all, by this point, Michael was proving himself that he couldn't be an adult. I'm just gonna stop myself mid-sentence, I really hated that take, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, this does it justice. So, basically, you know, around this time, this was in the middle of the Bad Tour, literally just a year prior, he released a Bad album, and that did incredible. But one thing that this album did that changed Michael forever was that he literally changed his image. That's how crazy it was because literally he proved to the world that he can be mature and he proved to everyone that literally like he can be sexy, he can be raunchy, you know, like the other guy, you know, and that's what's so great about that album. And I know for many of you Michael fans, you're going to be like, well, he did prove that before the bad era. And yeah, that is true. But for the average person, People viewed Michael as if he was just this innocent dude who attracted only families, you know? He wasn't, nobody thought, nobody could have ever thought that he could make songs like Dirty Diana or The Way You Make Me Feel, you know? Or even songs like Bad or Speed Demon, you know? Where they show that he's like a rebel and a ladies man and all that type of stuff. And before all you Michael fans start writing in the comments about me, this is coming from a guy who loves the Victory Era. Literally, my name is Nightline84. The Victory Era is literally my favorite era, so don't think that I'm biased, alright? So yeah, you know, hopefully this take did it justice and, you know, back to your regular programming. So basically, Warner Brothers made a concept on how this album would have uh, worked if Michael Jackson were to join the project. It would have been two sides. One side would have been done by Michael Jackson and that would have portrayed Batman. And then the other side would have been uh, done by Prince, which would have portrayed as the Joker. Now, obviously, I love this idea because first of all, uh, when you have Michael's innocence yet like you know, heaviness that uh, was portrayed during the Bad album and then Prince's raunchiness and sexiness that was portrayed in like, Love Sexy at the time. Sorry, I just had to come back. Literally, like, I did not mean to say Love Sexy because that's the complete opposite of Love Sexy. Well, kind of? But literally, like, you know, you know what I mean when I say, like, you know, sexiness, whatever. Oh, oh, this is probably the last time I'm doing this. And so obviously, you know, this whole idea was just extremely perfect. And I just love just everything about this. But unfortunately, that never came true. Because one day, Prince invited Michael over to dinner to talk about this album. And I guess something happened to where they just couldn't agree. And in fact, we really don't know what happened. Um, but obviously this album just wouldn't have worked even if Michael were to agree because first of all, both of them were in different record labels uh, with Prince being in Warner Brothers and Michael being under CBS slash uh, Epic Records. And you know, there's other claims too, like how um, both Michael and Prince probably wouldn't have agreed with um, their views on the album since, you know, both of them are definitely people who like to take um, lead 
on projects. And obviously I think a very big reason to why Michael never really joined to working on this album was because Michael was in the middle of the Bad Tour. And obviously we know that he doesn't really work that much during this time. And you know, with him being in the middle of a tour and then him being a perfectionist as well, we wouldn't have seen this album come out until like 1990 or something like that. So obviously now that um, Michael wasn't a part of this project, Prince went to the set where Batman was being filmed at just to get inspiration, of course. And then later around that time, he went to the studio, um, collected songs that were supposed to be on Ravens of the Joy Fantastic, um, and worked on a couple other new songs. And in under two weeks, we got this album. You can obviously correct me in the comment section down below. Um, but yeah, he worked on this album at a pretty short time period, but really we got a pretty good album. On this album, you know, we had songs like The Future, Arms of Orion, Scandalous, which in my opinion I think is the best track on this album and is one of Prince's best uh, ballads ever. Um, and of course, you know, we got songs like um, The Future, Glem and Crush, um, uh, what was on here? Trust? Oh yeah, Trust and... Uh, um, Party Man as well, which both Party Man and Trust made it into the movie, or at least were big roles in the movie. Now, even though this album never happened, um, we can imagine what the Batman side would have sounded like since Michael has worked on a bunch of songs during this time, like Work That Body, um, Mine Is The Magic, Who Is It, Black or White, you know, and so having songs like Who Is It and Mine Is The Magic being represented for Batman honestly would have been insane since, you know, they're very upbeat, gritty. They also have some orchestral elements and beautiful elements as well. And so honestly, like, this album just would have been incredible if Michael was on it. But um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And what we got instead was this album. Like I said earlier, I really like this album. And I do recommend you guys to give this a listen because this is a lot of fun. Now, before I end the video, I just want to uh, give a quick shout out to Val's Manips. Um, their art is incredible. Um, I asked for permission to put one of their arts um, as my thumbnail for the video, and so I just want to say thank you. Um, and yeah, anyways, you guys, thank you for watching the video. Um, if you haven't already, please go follow me on Instagram, night underscore line 84. Very active on there. Um, and also, you know, just remember to keep a positive mindset. Very important, you know, to have that. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much. Um, and stay tuned for more videos. Peace.